Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Abby Bronson. For those who missed the session yesterday, I head up the research strategy area at PPMD, and we have a really exciting session this afternoon on what really matters the heart. Um, but before we get started with our panel and our talks, we have another story. Um, and I'd like to introduce Stephen Marcassani, who is going to be telling his story. That's not going to be high enough. Um, good afternoon. Uh, bear with me. The last time I spoke in front of a group this size, I was wearing an asparagus costume in the fourth grade. Um, I had one line, and it was, I'm an asparagus. My stalk is long and slender. Um, I'm hoping this goes better. Um, um, I met my wife online before it was in vogue to do so. Um, only to find out that she lived next door. Um, both of us are a little bit introverted, in spite of the fact that I'm talking in front of about six billion people. Um, she had a two-year-old little boy. Uh, he's beautiful, as you can see. Um, and in 2001, in July, um, he drowned during a pool accident at his daycare. Um, I hadn't had a whole lot of reality up until that point, and needless to say, it, it shook the world um, as I knew it. Um, what we've come to learn is that, um, some of this may sound familiar, he was a little difficult time getting upstairs. He was a little slow being able to catch things. His manual abilities were a little bit off. Nothing staggering, just a few delays. But at the time, it wasn't enough for it to draw any real attention, so he wasn't diagnosed with anything. But we have reason to believe now that he may have had Duchenne, we just didn't know. Um, six weeks after that, my father uh, passed away from a sudden heart attack. Um, once again, surprise, world shaken. Uh, we barely began to breathe again from what happened in July. Two weeks after that was 9-11. I worked at the National Navy Medical Center where they brought the casualties from the Pentagon. Um, it was uh, in a matter of two months. The world we knew was over. Hard to figure out what to do next. But we did. We got married a year and a half later. My wife went back to school and she got her degree in biology. In the words of Forrest Gump, she's a very smart lady. Um, and life went on. Um, in 2009, we had waited a long time. We talked about it. We decided, let's have a family. It's OK to have children. The love is worth the loss, if that's what has to happen. Um, and we had Vincent. Very similar in a lot of appearance to Julian, blonde hair, blue eyes, you know. A small shadow of his spirit was in him, but he was his own person as well. I was a father for the first time. And we had a family, and we said things are going to be okay. That's all we want. Is this? Um, we are like, okay. We have a family. We've healed. You know, it, moving on is not forgotten. I don't really like platitudes, but some of them actually apply. Um, and then in 2010, you know, I get another curveball. My wife's only sibling uh, suffered from mental illness and took her own life. Um, again, world shattered. You think you know. You think you're ready. You think you moved on, and the hardest things are over. But they're not. But you keep doing. Every day is coming, whether you're ready for it or not. And we moved on. This guy. This is Lance. We started again. We had healed from Missy the best we could. Had another child. He was perfect. Everything's cool. But you know, now, we're living our lives with a little bit of hesitation, you know, because now we know that out of nowhere things just happen. But, you know, we're, we're good. 
Um, Vincent, best big brother I've ever seen. I, uh, I have two older brothers. I'm sure they did their best. Um, they're probably watching, so I have to say that. Um, but you know, a new life, we healed again, a new beginning. Things are gonna be great. We had a chance of being happy again. Um, the, the dynamic between Vincent and Lance from birth has been, it's been amazing. Uh, we've actually had other parents like going, could you have Vincent teach our kids how to treat their little brothers because they don't seem to get it and Vincent does? And I'm like, I don't know how he got it because I'm the little brother, I'm used to the abuse, so whatever he learned, he learned on his own. And Leah's a little sister, so she certainly couldn't inform him. Um, but he's just, he, He's always doted on his brother, and it's been amazing to watch. Uh, Lance was very different from Vincent. Vincent, even at a young age, was very contemplative. He would lie in his crib for hours and just stare at the ceiling. That's not Lance. Lance was ridiculous and giggly and temperamental and never slept. Ever slept. Um, no self-soothing mechanisms whatsoever. Um, but, you know, and he was a little, low, a little late on his milestones, you know, 14 months walking. Um, once again, just before we get the specialist involved, oh, he's got it. You know, a little slow on talking. Uh, nope, he's okay. You know, so no reason, no alarms raised. We just continued on. You know, um, and Lance has always had a very magnetic personality, even as a baby. Um, he's a great snuggler. You know, um, and he just, people just gravitated to him. He's always smiling. You know, his bad moods didn't last long. You know, just a sweet kid. And, you know, he was just with everybody. Part of me puts this picture up just because, uh, well, I freaking love this picture. Um, but he was, he was just a sweet kid. He, he loved to be cuddled. He loves, he's a very emotionally sensitive little boy. He would walk over me. I had a, a, a number of injuries. I do woodworking, so it's par for the course. Um, and he would always just sort of like, you know, kiss a Band-Aid or whatever. He just was always looking out for other people and never really regard for himself. Um, uh, at one point, we went to the Outer Banks, and we had the good fortune of being there when the monarch butterflies were migrating. And I caught this picture. And if you look closely, you can see a couple of them around him, but I had never seen bliss until I saw this moment. And uh, once again, we're happy, everything's okay. I knew Lance was different than Vincent in one way. This is, sorry, this is a continuation of the beach trip. Um, as they get older, the bond between the brothers grew stronger. Uh, and. There were a few times where I felt like Vincent might be being the big, good big brother because he felt he was supposed to. Like we're watching him and he wants to make sure, see daddy, I'm good at this, am I? You know, for the praise and affection. But then there were times when, you know, as parents, you're always watching and they, oddly enough, don't figure that out for some time so you can catch some moments. And Lance was sick one day and this was Vincent just checking on him, just cause. And, you know, Vincent was just there. I knew Lance was different. We had a big snowstorm, 22 inches, nightmare in Maryland. We have never prepared for that kind of storm. We took, I cleared out a space in our backyard and Lance gets out there and of course he doesn't want to be where I cleared out. He wants to be where the birdhouse is. Well, the birdhouse was all the way across the part that I hadn't shoveled. So I was like, um, no, I am not carrying you to the birdhouse. Took him 45 minutes to crawl through 22 inches of snow to get to the birdhouse. He didn't complain. He didn't, he just got there, he's like, I did it. And I was like, better man than I am. I wouldn't have done it. I don't like birds that much. But it's just, it, he's had that kind of spirit early on. And uh, it's been awesome to be a part of it. And then, well, he was climbing everything, he's happy. and brothers, hanging out in my wood shop, just doing their thing. <sighs> then in the summer of 2017, we went for his wellness checkup. 
for kindergarten just to get all the papers work signed, which is a ridiculous amount of paperwork. Um, and uh, as we're leaving, his mother has big calves, my, his grandfather has big calves. So once again, nothing really raised an alarm. As we're leaving, I was like, aren't his calves funny? And the doctor goes, wait, bring him back. Okay. And they did the Gower test, and she's like, I think you need to see somebody. Okay. Um, Sent us to an orthopedist, which to this day doesn't make sense, but you know, your doctor say you do. So we went to the orthopedist, and the orthopedist had him do the Gower test. My wife was there alone. Unfortunately, I couldn't make that one. And Googled it in her office. Looked up and said, he has Duchenne. No hesitancy, no concern, not any idea of the bomb that she just dropped on a life that had already been bombed a lot. Um, hadn't seen a single test, just threw it out there. And we're like, okay. Um, he has, uh, we go to Children's Hospital, which is an amazing place. Um, but overwhelming in a lot of ways because they handle so many different things. And we got the genetic test and it came back. He has um, a duplication of exons A through 12. I don't know exactly what that means other than he has Duchenne. Uh, and I don't know how it's going to end. But this is what I do know. I know my first inclination was how do I fix it? I'm a fixer. I like to be active and do things. I like to. I'm not as much of a control freak as his mom, um, but I like to fix things. And how do I make it go away? Who do we call? What, where, where, where are the instructions? You know, this disease has been around forever. I watched Jerry Lewis as a kid. I get this. You know, this is supposed to work out. And no instruction booklet. No, lots of support in a myriad of different places, but hard to find. Misinformation, information, overload, clinical trials. The fire hose is big. And I won't lie, our capacity to deal with it was challenged. It was hard. But we, my wife's diligence, steered us to the Vermorland trial, um, which we were accepted. We started in December. We just finished the um, six month placebo arm. Um, we're not sure what he was on, uh, we know what he's on now. And there's optimism there, and it's genuine optimism. It's not foolhardy, but we'll see what happens. And ultimately, it comes down to this. This is what we know. We know this little boy won't be stopped and will fight everything with the same character he's had since birth. He's funny, he's ridiculous, he has a heart of gold and a will of steel. We know that. We know that this pile of family smiles and laughs as much as we ever have. This group has been through challenge and having our world being upended time and again. Every day we get up, every day we breathe, and every day we do our best. Some days are truly awful. More of them aren't. I snapped this picture in one of the moments I was talking about earlier where they don't know you're paying attention. And it was without posing or illusion. I revisit this picture when I'm afraid of our future and what this disease may bring. This picture is the embodiment of hope for me. I know that many of us, if not all, are scared of the future for our boys and have no idea what's coming next. But everybody who's in this room came here because they still have hope. And that makes it worth it. Thank you.